Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to use the Azure AI services that are built into Fabric via the Synapse ML uh, dependencies and libraries that are that are already there. We uh, won't need to use any Azure AI services directly or have an a Azure AI services uh, key in this case because this is all going to be built in to Fabric directly and we can just call the AI, Azure AI services via the Synapse ML libraries. So in this solution what we're going to do is bring in uh, data from an S3 bucket on Amazon and translate it from five different languages into a data frame, store that data frame into the data lake as a delta table. So let's get into the solution. So, this, so the source of the data is going to be an Amazon S3. So here's an Amazon S3 bucket where I've uploaded five different files. So they're in uh, uh, Chinese, uh, simplified, uh, German, Spanish, French, and Japanese. And what I'm gonna do is bring all of these into Fabric translate them all at the same time, storm in the Delta Lake table. So I've, so these are source documents. Um, you know, we can not really see them, but we can see the metadata. So let me move that out of the way. Um, here in Fabric, I already created a shortcut to the, the S3 bucket. So if I kind of look at these side by side, I can see that they have the same content. And I can pretty easily look at the files within the, uh, within the data lake. And there's the Chinese one. And if I back up, I can look at uh, the Japanese. I can look at the Spanish and so on. So you get the idea. So all of these have the same structure. They're all JSON, uh, multi-line files. Um, they have predefined uh, 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 column names in them. And we're just going to read all of these in one go, translate them in one batch, and store them back in the data lake. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, let's switch over to the workspace and we can see that's the data lake that we're gonna be reading from. And I created this notebook called Translate Reviews. Um, I haven't committed to a repo yet. We'll do that probably at the end. But let's take a look at this notebook. Um, it's very short. There's not a lot of steps to this process. Uh, the first one is to read in all the JSON files. So we read, uh, just use Spark Read. Um, we have to tell it it's a multi-line JSON file. And, and then we specify where it's coming from. So if we actually look at the um, reviews, it's from you know files, S3 reviews, and then all. So it'll grab all those at the same time. So that looks nice. And let's go ahead and do that actually. And then the second line will display that so we can see what we fetched from Amazon. Okay, uh, the session got going and then we got our files. So, so we can see that the, the each row corresponds to the fields within the JSON files. Um, I'm really only going to focus on this text column, so I want to translate this text from Japanese, uh, Chinese, French, Italian, and German into English. In the next cell, we actually do the translation, and here we're importing Synapse ML services to get access to Azure AI services, and we don't need to worry about keys or endpoints. Uh, that will be done behind the scenes by the Synapse ML services uh, package. Um, here we call the translate function to create a transformer. And a transformer is kind of like a recipe for uh, what should happen to a data frame when we run it through this transformer. So the translate review transformer will saying it's, it's going to the source column is text, the output column is translation, and the output language is English. We don't really need to specify the input languages because AI services can analyze the text and, and kind of in, implicitly figure out what, what the input language is. It does a pretty good job. So our input is text, so that's this column here. And our output is translation, that will be a new column that's appended. And then the next step is just run the transformer. So we created this transformer, here we say transform, give it an input data frame, and then on the output um, I'm just doing a little bit of manipulation to take that text translated output column and add it to the end of the columns, that we, the first 10 columns that we already have. And then here, let's go ahead and run that. Um, it's pretty pretty fast. Yep, that's done. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of ignore all of these columns. I'm just gonna grab the input column and the output column so we can look at that. And that's into a data frame called translated, I'm just selecting two columns from all of them. There we go. So here is the input text, which matches the input data frame up here. And then the output text is the English translation of those, which look pretty good. I didn't extract the confidence, but I just want to see what it came up with. Um, they read about right, so that's pretty cool. 
And then in this last step, um, I'm going to take this data frame with the two columns, write that into the data lake as a delta table. and then select that with SQL just to see that it actually landed where it was supposed to and it looks good and, and that looks pretty good. From So from here, I could take this data and do whatever I want with it. Um, probably in a production system, I would have more columns and incorporate it into a um, reporting solution or do further analysis on it. Um, I hope that makes sense. I, I hope it was interesting or at least you learned something. I'll see you next time.